all right uh, good evening everyone on the on this onset i would like to thank uh, mahipal sir uh, namrata ma'am and zais for giving this opportunity uh, i was given the topic to talk about a successful workflow for a trifocal eye oval practice now to achieve this uh, first and foremost is choosing the right patient which is very very crucial for this we need certain uh, sets of equipments so let's go one by one over it uh, if you do a, a good slit lamp uh, examination you have just one half the battle so make sure you do not miss any kind of abnormalities look at the tear film also make sure the tear bud and shimmers are normal uh, in terms of pupil uh, this is something that we always miss out uh, look at the pupil size uh, make sure the pupil size is more than 3 mm and uh, less than 5 mm photopic and scotopic pupil and uh, angle alpha also is uh, one of uh, important factor but even though it's very rare that it goes into the abnormal range but still it's good to have a look at it uh, basically it is nothing but the visual uh, distance between the visual axis and the limbal center and this value should be less than 0.6 now biometric biometry like uh, everyone was uh, mentioning earlier optical is the gold standard please try to stick to it because the results are extremely extremely good and accurate uh, but if you do if you don't have it uh, but still it is still okay but stick to immersion do not try uh, a contact method Uh, then we need to look at uh, how the surface of the cornea is now these are the machines and uh, if at all you do have such uh, bad uh, corneas i think it's better to avoid uh, uh, i mean avoid directly doing the surgery uh, and so keep a target as if the best uh, is if the values of higher vibration is less than 0.3 is the best candidate uh, the maximum you can push it uh, max to 0.5 or so now uh, by just looking at the surface uh, you shouldn't just simply go ahead always try to look a little more deeper sometimes the irregularity might be just from the epi epithelium itself which can be uh, treatable which i'll talk to you in detail later on uh, this is one of the most important thing i i feel uh, doing a macular oct is very crucial not just for premium iols i feel in every cataract workup this has to be a standard protocol uh, because in this era of the patient's expectation is just completely off the roof and uh, if we miss out any uh, epithelial membrane or uh, unseen macular edema during fundus examination we really had it uh, post surgery um in terms of iol formula i think it is uh, unanimous and uh, it is uh, easy um uh, and it works in all situations i think barrett unisil 2 is simple and i think i really feel at this moment we should all follow the same uh the 3 c's the counseling 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 is so important that you really need to put uh, your uh, uh, your time uh, with the patient uh, speak to him uh, talk to him about the pros and cons uh, my way of uh, one of the key things which i normally tell is uh, these lenses basically splits the light and focuses three places that is distance intermediate near and because it splits the light whenever you look at bulbs you see these rings and whenever you see the rings that means the lens is working really well if you just tell these few words believe me after the surgery whenever he sees this light or rings and halos he'll be like very happy and he'll be like oh wow the lens is working so please tell uh, you know certain things and uh, you know explain to the patient what he might expect for surgery now uh, i like i always say i always use uh, ctrs in uh, all my toric patients uh, now why ctr in all the, all my patients is this is a oct image of uh, uh, post surgery immediate post surgery you can see a huge uh, space between the posterior capsule and the lens this is one of the main reasons why there is a high a higher chance of uh, lens rotation uh, in the early post operative period so when whenever we implant a ctr basically it expands the back and uh, it brings the anterior ca anterior posterior capsule closer together and uh, improves the contact between the lens and the back now uh, this is an image where a ctr is placed and you can see a beautiful contact between the posterior capsule and the lens Uh, one uh, one more suggestion is i would really uh, suggest uh, everyone to try to polish the anterior capsule uh, this would really uh, improve the visual or optical quality of the eyes uh, post implantation of all these trifocal iols so let's go over a, a few cases so here is a case uh, a month uh, a month old uh, patient who's operated with trifocal iol uh, had the 66 vision and n6 for distance and near uh, but extremely annoyed with his vision So when we look closer, uh, there was more abrasion arising from the cornea. So we looked closely at the tear film and we realized that was the culprit. So we did uh, uh, we put the patient on dry eye treatment and the patient improved and immediately even with the scans and when we looked at the optical quality, uh, it improved. 
Now, coming over to the next case, again, the patient post surgery had severe glare, and uh, even the optical quality uh, assessment uh, said the same. So, when we looked uh, closely at the slit lamp, uh, there was actually decentration or nasal decentration of the lens. So, you always remember these multifocal or trifocal lenses uh, are uh, very sensitive to decentration. So, always look for it and uh, make sure that the lens is centered post surgery. Uh, here's a case 3 patient who is unhappy, and uh, this is because of a posterior capsular opacification, uh, which is easily treatable. But uh, uh, keep in mind that uh, the early or even uh, the little amount of PCO can, uh, can have a significant effect in visual quality in these patients. So don't shy away from uh, doing these lasers. Even, those, even though these lenses have a good uh, you know, PCO, barrier, uh, PCO barriers, but still there is a chance of happening. So, uh, don't, don't shy away on doing the laser. Now, uh, here's uh, uh, one more. The fourth case is uh, here post-surgery, the patient was left with cylinder. So we wondered, how did that happen? How did we miss this out? So when we looked closer, actually, the surgeon had ordered a toric uh, trifocal lens, and the company, by mistake, sent a regular trifocal lens, and the doctor did not check. This is a very important thing that you need to have multiple checkpoints to make sure the lens that you place doesn't matter even a trifocal, even a monofocal should be uh, checked at multiple points that it is the right lens and then only in fact. Now, uh, coming to the fifth case, here's a 45-year-old uh, uh, male patient who had immersive vision in both his eyes since six months. And uh, when we look closer, he did have cataract in both eyes and is very keen on going for a multifocal or trifocal lens. Now, uh, when we see these scans, the right eye seems fine. There's a little bit of irregularities in the left eye. But the thing is, we shouldn't label any of these patients before looking at the epithelium. So when you look at the epithelium, there is actually the irregularity is occur occurring more from the epithelium than the stroma. Stroma looks perfectly good and nice. So what we did is we put the patient on uh, uh, treatment uh, for a month. Uh, and uh, one month when we uh, asked the patient to come, uh, the, uh, the epithelium healed beautifully. And then we went ahead with the trifocal implantation. Now, what do we do uh, when uh, post-LASIK patients come to us and ask for a trifocal eye oil implantation? So how do we go about these cases? So there are two ways. One is if, uh, obviously, uh, all the previous criteria has to fit in. There is no two ways about it. But uh, generally talking, if the cornea is regular, well-centered ablation, then you can simply go ahead with the trifocal eye oil implantation. But if the cornea is irregular, you have two ways of doing this. The first, uh, you, can plan, uh, you can do a, a topoidal treatment, uh, and then uh, after two months, you can reassess and then go for the trifocal eye oil. Uh, the option two is uh, some few doctors do uh, trifocal eye oil first and then go for a TCAT or a wafer guided treatment. But uh, uh, we personally uh, believe in doing a TCAT first so that at two months post TCAT, we can reassess the patient again or reassess the eye and decide again whether his eye is suitable for the trifocal or not. So that way we are always safe. So the take home message is choosing the right patient is very important. Uh, counseling is very crucial. If you do good counseling, uh, believe me, uh, you will, uh, your, uh, you have like 90% of the cases is, you can rest assured just, the, just because of counseling, the patient will be happy. Uh, if you put an unhappy patient into an equation, unhappiness is equal to expectation divided by reality. So basically make sure the patient's expectation is as realistic as possible. That way the patient is always happy. Try to avoid very high demanding patients. Always have a closer look for any abnormalities. A good practice does not just mean having a lot of patients. You need to have patients too. And lastly, uh, always keep your uh, patients, happy patients close and unhappy patients closer. So whenever a patient is unhappy, make sure you, uh, you know, talk to him more, keep in touch with him and make sure he realizes that, that you are with him till the time he's very happy. Thank you for your time.